This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This week's episode is brought to you by Movement Watches. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMP. No, f***. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Pete Reedy, I reckon you're nailing this. What's the website? MVMT.com slash do go on. It's a a place where you get watches. Real cool watches. I got one myself. Check it out. Hey, Matt. Matt, I just want to say that you did a really good job. Reading that, that out, I think you did a really good job. Thank you. And you know what else? I might have peaked at, at one point there, I think, but hopefully we no, can fix that in post. No, 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 I think you did great. <sighs> Should we get on with the show? <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave and I'm talking into a microphone with a couple of others talking into microphones. It's Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. This is a microphone? <laughs> what do you think it was a paddle pop? Yes. And I was like, the flavour is lacking. This is well, Why am I talking into it? Yeah. I was like, why are you guys talking into your delicious treats? Mine tastes good. Maddie, stop licking it. You don't know whose mouths have been on that. I know exactly whose mouths have been on it. <laughs> How are you, boys? I'm, I'm pretty so good. good. Yeah. Matt's pretty good. I'm so good. Matt's just come back from a sweet little jaunt in Brisbane. Had a great time in Brisbane, actually. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Did you met, have a good met a lot of listeners. Pe- people up there are keen to get us up to do a live pod, and I and I hope. And we refuse. <laughs> no, we'd love to. Well, no, yeah, I, I was going to say, hopefully you guys don't mind, but I kind of I basically promised a few different people that we, we'd be coming up later this year. Okay, cool. Okay, who did you promise? Just the mayor? A, uh, the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Um, also, Mrs. Mayor. Damn it. You did a double whammy. I was going to say Tom Tate, my favourite mayor, but that's Gold Coast, which we could also visit. Tommy yeah. Tate's there as How well. How do you know the mayor of Gold Coast? He is a great source of humour. Okay. Is he better than the mayor of Geelong? Yes. Is that still that, the, uh, the paparazzi bloke? No, know. I don't think so. The guy with the fake six pack yeah. <laughs> on top of a big old so gut. If you're from overseas and you don't know, we once had a mayor who, <laughs> who was Not a fat we, guy. Geelong. Geelong, <laughs> which is a... A, t- a city that's really close to Melbourne had uh, a mayor. Was his name Darren? Yeah, Darren something. Who was a former paparazzi that worked in England, and uh, he's a fat guy, but he wanted to look muscular, so we got like a uh, surgical implants to make him look like he had yeah, a six, six pack, pack over his fat. And he always had like a rainbow mohawk. His hair was always very interesting. He was a real cool what a guy. character. He's so cool. Wait, hang on. <laughs> but anyway. he is. Yeah, I know. Anyway, but Brisbane was a good time, Matt. Brisbane was a real good time. Yeah, had a, re- had a really fun time. Um, did some fun shows. But yeah, hey, up, hey, your bar up there was really good. So I, I don't know. I liked it up there. There was one guy I liked um, uh, who, who brought a few friends. I don't know if they were listeners or not, but they were very nice people. That's good. His name was the Honorable Gareth Jones, and he works for a company, according to his ticket uh, purchasing information, oh, Huge Dildos Incorporated. <laughs> You got you got me a beauty there, Honourable Gareth. And yet, yes, Matt does check every person who comes to his shows' personal details. No, the the venue actually pointed that out to me. Oh, okay, they're like, you, did you see this guy? Also, met uh, uh, a listener called Chelsea, who and I met a bunch of listeners. They're all very cool people. I shouldn't single any of them out. But here you are doing exactly that, Gareth and Chelsea. Just two two names that two are examples. on the top of my head. But so many nice, cool people. That's awesome. Came well, along. Also, Shepherd, who. He's a Twitter follower as well. Yep. Who's one of those ones that never shows his face. Oh. And I saw his face. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, thank you to the people of Brisbane for taking some pity on our little Maddie. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. And soldiering on through that hour of pain <laughs> and really suffering. D- yeah, I didn't know. There's no good. I know. We know. We have to sit through it next I, week. Well, we will. That, that's right. Matt is bringing his hour of pain and suffering to her. <laughs> To no, s- it's, co- it's comedy. To Sydney. Well, it's a comedy show. I mean, that's subjective, isn't it? It's, so we it com- is subjectively a comedy show. Objectively, there objectively. There we go, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, but you are coming to Sydney this weekend, Matt. And as are Jess and I for our live show on Sunday. Do not forget it's sold out, but uh, if you are have a, a ticket holder, please do come down to the Chippo Hotel this Sunday afternoon. But what if th- no one came? That'd be amazing. Well, we'd have... Uh, oh, yeah, we'd have the money. We'd have a party. And we could just hang out. We'd yeah. probably just record the episode, in to be fact, honest. In a, no like one a, come. <laughs> we still have to make the rec- the recording happen because we've got to put the episode out that yeah, week. Yeah, right. 
It'll so just sound really empty and sad. We'll probably just take it back to the hotel room. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Get drunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sober. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, should we pod, do you reckon? Well, I was trying to give Matt a sweet little oh, segue yeah, there sorry. so we could talk about his yeah. show Talk about Sydney. your pain and stuff. Yeah, so a, that a you giant, want to on nice giant dwarf doing the show, just the one off in Sydney, uh, the giant dwarf on Saturday the 26th. It's this Saturday night. This Saturday night, great. So in a few days' time, if you're listening to this at the time. What else is happening on the 26th? Discount code of do go on, D, no spaces, D-O-G-O-O-N, do goon, etc. Mm-hmm. And that I think that's like a twenty percent discount or something. That's pretty Maybe good. Maybe fifteen, maybe ten. Are you gonna? Can Maybe Dave and, Can Dave and I use that discount? Yeah, code? yeah. I've said you can. You guys twist my arm. You can use that code yes. as well. With it, he's making us pay. Fuck yeah! Just saved it fifteen percent. So if you didn't get a ticket to the live show, you can come there and still be in the same room as us. One of us will be talking. It'll be like one of the episodes where I do a report, like today. I can heckle you if you like. If yeah. people want to hear our voices, you could. If you guys could chip in. If you could, yeah, if you need, if you want to take a little break from your little show, from your little skits and riddles, Matt, Dave or I could jump up. Yeah, Matt, I'll tag in at any time. Yeah. All right, I'm going to, I'll tag you guys in at some point. I know some of your bits. I do too. I'm really. And not your comedy bits. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do them. What? You're going to do my bits live. <laughs> live Dave. on stage. Dave, I don't believe you. You still haven't humped a watermelon. Mm. Your name is Mud. That's because you refuse to film it. I do not refuse. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd, I won't film it, sure, but yeah, I guess I do refuse. Well, speaking of other we'll things set up a that we promised we would do, we also had a Patreon goal that you or I would get a tattoo, and we put that out to the people. And Matt, you kind of put the poll out there. Dave and I actually don't know the results. Oh, right. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've known the res- results for a little while. So it's closed. We Like, we are it's done. legit it's not decided. being kept in the loop. It's <laughs> closed. And it, I mean, it's closed. And even if it wasn't, there was there weren't enough people left who, who could have... In the world. Around. In the world. <laughs> it was that We had much more than landslide. 4 billion votes. And the votes went uh, by more than 70%. Wow. And closer to 80% to Jess Perkins. <laughs> I'm in. genuinely surprised. I would have thought people would have loved to have seen you in pain. Well, no, I also, I was thinking that just because I, they could have chosen my tattoo yeah. seemed like a more exciting thing. But I think in the end, they were just like, Jess wants it more. So, Which is so lovely yeah. and so typical our of our listeners. We're nice. like, oh, let's give Jess something. To you, you guys are the best. So I'm going to get a tattoo. Look, so, 70 and 80% of them are the best. Yeah, the other two. And the other ones, look, I'm with them. If I was them, I would have voted for me as well. No doubt about it. <laughs> and I was willing to get something pretty wild. So I'm probably relieved. Maybe in the future. So what are you going to get, Jess? I'm going to get a banana playing the ukulele. Oh, this is so And good. it also has a swastika... Tattoo on its arm. Whoa, okay. It's wow. not me, it's the banana <laughs> who loves it. Yeah, w- Is that a political <laughs> statement? It's weird. I don't understand. It's banana. what I want. Oh, it's okay. It's what you I want. I love ukuleles. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Don't go on. <laughs> <laughs> You're really well, trying to... <laughs> trying to take some heat from me here. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. I thought, I thought we'd sort of moved on from any sort of sympathies, but... Look, it... Just... It slipped out of my mouth. And you just kept chasing it. <laughs> Let's pod. All right. Well, we will be filming Jess getting that tattoo very, very soon. Uh, we Pretty also good. did another poll, or I did a poll personally for my topic this week, and I put it out to the, the all the people uh, for the first time. And there were t- I gave 10 options, right? Whoa. Um, and they were all based on Canada. So they're all Canadian-related topics. Awesome. One came out in front by like a, a decent margin. It got um got over a, thir- a third of the votes, which is a pretty pretty chunky result. Oh, wow! And you got quite a few votes Ten this time. Race. Yeah, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. That's fucking awesome. cool. That's yeah. great. Um, but the winner. Oh, I guess I asked the question. I get the the reason people ask me to do a Canadian report is because there there's a celebration of the 150 years of mm. white settlement there. I guess it's sort of it's a slightly controversial one because um. Much like our own Australia Day, um, yeah. people like it's really split the country. I don't, I don't know as much about Canada, obviously, and I really probably am not in any place to talk about it. So maybe I shouldn't. But uh, I know I've got a, a couple of questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's more about it's like people wondering: is it is it should we be celebrating this event 
that is was so painful to the um, indigenous peoples of the country. Mm. I like how some of the one of the maybe it was Vancouver have called their celebration Canada 150 plus, oh, sort of nice. like, and they they almost called it off. I just I think it was Vancouver. They were talking about it maybe being inappropriate, but they ended up sort of talking to community groups and stuff. Anyway, that that's not uh, what this topic is about. That's why the Canadian topic vote yep. happened. Right, and we had a few Canadian people being like, hey, talk about my great country. Yeah, yeah. we have done. We have done a few in the past. We did the one about um, uh, the Montreal screw job, which mm-hmm. was quite Canadian related. Um, we also did... Montreal d- being in the title. Yes, that's true. That helps. But also the, the key wrestler there was a Canadian man. Um, but also Dave did a topic The, the called, October Crisis. Which is a classic... Um, Canadian, Canadian Canadian kidnapping story. If you haven't heard that one, I'd never heard of it before. It's fun. Anyway, here's the question for this week's topic: What is said to be the most significant agricultural crime ever committed in Canada? Agricultural crime. Oh, the Great Corn Steal. Oh man, that is so close. That is so ridiculously close. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? The Great. Something something heist is what it is. The great corn heist. It's the great maple syrup heist. Even more. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so seriously. It was so good. Cool. Corn syrup is like. Oh yeah, ah. that is was so. That's what good. I meant. I meant corn syrup heist. Everyone, I, you misspoke and you meant maple syrup. Dave got it. Everybody, yay! So I had to go a little more Canadian on your uh, on your food stuff. The oh. great maple syrup heist. Man, we could have made moose jokes. I'm so sorry. And this was suggested by Megan Elizabeth at. Megan Harvey on Twitter. Um, she also she also offered up herself as a, a tribute, I think she said. Huh. Which is like, that's like talk from that movie with the bow and arrow. Yes. Yes. The Hunger Games. Blowheart. Oh my God, I think you meant Robin Hood? <laughs> Blowheart. <laughs> Why did you think? I'm not sure where uh, I was uh, going to... Hang on. I'm not sure. You... Why did you think the Hunger Games, that, that youth heart. fiction but there's novel... There's a heart. There's something about heart in it? No. Blowheart? No. It's one of the main characters called Blowheart. Katniss. Katniss. That's it. Oh, so close. It's like corn to maple syrup. Yeah. We're nearly nailing Blowheart. it. Blowheart. There's no heart in it? No. She's the Mockingjay. Yep. All right. Well, end of story. That's not the end of the story. Anyway. Well, it said one thing, right? Anyway. <laughs> You're a Hunger Games fan. Huge. Really? Loved it. Like The re- books or the... The books. And the, like the movies were fine. Wow. I'm, I mean, I'm over it now, but I went through a phase of like I was up to like three AM smashing through the book. I loved him. I like Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, he's great. So they had to turn him into a robot or something in the last one, didn't they? No. No. Or animate him. No. no. I think he, his scenes have already been filmed. I think. Oh, Might I thought, have been a different I thought, film. I thought that he died before that. The Are last you, one. Uh, God, we're taking a long time to get Philip Seymour Hoffman, aka Blowhard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. Anyway, so uh, this topic better be good, so I can blow heart. Before I get into the heist, which is <laughs> blow heart, so I can blow heart. <laughs> no, blow heart is the he's the wrestler from the Montreal Screw Job. That's not blow the hitman heart. <laughs> is that right? No. Fine. I, fine. If I'm taking requests. Uh, so um, I should probably up right up the top. Going to talk a little bit about the maple syrup industry in Canada, right? And in, in particular, in Quebec. Um, which is where this all went down. In Quebec, there's an organization called the Fédération des Poids Docteurs oh Asserios oh no. du Quebec. I'm so sorry, everyone. Isn't what I, they sort of felt French. Did it? How? No, I was sorry with you. Uh, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it FPAC. F P A Q because it that's what it okay. abbreviates down to. Uh, in English, it's the Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers, basically. That makes sense. It was set up in 1966, which, uh, Jess, as you'd know, is a is a good year because the Saints won their only premiership oh that year. Oh, my God. Um, F-Pac- you have never... I was like, this is the first time Matt's ever paused or let me do a good year, and it was because you wanted to make a Saints reference. Yep. Fair enough. Carry on. England also won the, the Soccer World Cup. So they're two, two, shit, two shit football teams who won their only things in that <laughs> year. So it was an interesting year. Uh, FPAC is an organization that regulates the production of maple syrup. They are a private organization and are sometimes described as a legal cartel. Why? So the mobsters of the... They're like, a, they're like legal mobsters of the maple syrup game. That's crazy. Yeah. How? Okay. Yep. I'm in. 
Uh, the so the, the cartel. I'm in the cartel. The, <laughs> hey, ask, ask me anything. <laughs> hey, I heard them down on on, str- on New Street. What is that character? <laughs> I'm trying to be your mobster, but I've I've sucked in some helium. Okay. A Quebecian. Did, yeah. Did, did you hear down on New Street they got a? What is that? Accent? They're trying to use maple syrup on their pancakes without paying us off, boss. Is that French Canadian? Absolutely not. It's no. That's very offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to everybody. I'm now I'm going back to the other character. Look, I just, you have um, one character. Hey. And it's a great character. Hey, I've also got Michael Caine, so... That's true. It's fucking two plus. Does right. Michael Caine like maple syrup? Hello, I'm Michael Caine, and I do not like Michael, maple syrup. <laughs> I do not like Michael syrup. <laughs> <laughs> in, my family, in my family, we always called it Michael syrup, because I liked it as a kid, but I grew up and I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> They, so the FPAC or the producers represented by FPAC, the cartel, they produce over... The sev- Maple Mob. The Maple Mob. <laughs> produce over 70% of the world's syrup. That's so much of it. And, one, and that's just <laughs> that's in Quebec. That's so much. Isn't that wild? That's Se- heaps. 70%. Of the world, though. Over 70%. And it's just one place makes over... That's heaps, eh? Whoa. I don't know what she's doing either. Well, that's syrup. <laughs> What a lot of responsibility they must feel. Hey? It's a lot. Whoa, Sarah. What's happening? <laughs> well, why, should, why won't you look at me? <laughs> well, I'm not just making fun of you, but usually you're the one who's like, the Spice Girls sold millions of records, guys. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Is she, so she's making fun of me for saying... I'm hyped up. Am I, are you making fun of me for telling you a fact about syrup? I mean, that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> Just doing true. my job, you, Jess. You're not wrong. Do go on. Uh, so with this much control over supply, the organization is also able to control the price, which is what they do. Um, and maple syrup is now worth more than oil. I uh, saw so one so- source... What? what? Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. I so saw one source say that it's worth uh, about $1,300 per barrel, another one saying about 1600 Obviously, it fluctuates a bit, but it's oh, sure, a lot market. of money right. Sorry, I think per meant, barrel. I think you were saying that the industry-wise, it's oh, worth more. No, no. I was like, holy shit. No, no, not, not quite, but just buy the barrel. What if we... It would cost you more to buy a barrel of maple syrup than a barrel of oil, which I think makes sense to me. What if we invented a maple syrup-powered car? Oh, no, that's a stupid idea because it would cost you so much money. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What, what's that gonna what's your, help? Is it gonna help what's the environment? Is that, is that your angle? Feels like that maybe would help the environment. It smells yeah. good. It smells so good. That's, those two things are what I was thinking. You would of. never need an air freshener. The fumes Th- would be delicious. <laughs> the money you'd save on air freshener. I mean, they already are, obviously, but <laughs> yeah. I just try to save the world. One yeah. pancake at a time. Yeah, you're under something. The organization maintains a strategic reserve of syrup. So this is what often these sort of cartels do. They, t- <laughs> to control supply, they stockpile it rather than so the market isn't flooded. My syrup. After Mine. A, after a big harvest, you know, they, they'll stockpile it so that harvest. in the leaner years they can maintain supply. Is it like in one? And maintain the is price. Is it in one like giant fish tank? Like a, they've got an aquarium that they bought from the Canadian government and filled it with maple syrup. <laughs> there's a sh- there's one shark in there yeah. and it is not okay. Oh, he's not very well. <laughs> no, that's definitely not oh. what happened. Oh. Okay. So this reserve, right, they call it the International Strategic Reserve. Um, pre- paired with the fact that they produce a high percentage of the world's product, this means that they can control the supply. Um, it is sometimes referred to as the OPEC of maple syrup. Uh, I think I think they're often being pejorative when they do that. But, you know, OPEC being the organisation of the petroleum exporting countries. Yeah. And what do we put petroleum in? Cars. A lot of things. Cars. <laughs> point well made. It's a point well made. <laughs> Your Honour, I rest my case. The defence rests. The street... Re- <laughs> The strategic reserves are spread across a few warehouses in rural Quebec towns, including in Saint Antoine de Tilly, which Nailed is it. which is the largest. Uh, holding. Well, I didn't try and do it with a French accent because you you really no go for no, it. No, hey, no, you, you're right, Maddie. Um, and th- this one holds over six thousand tons. There's also one in Placisville, um, <laughs> with around fifteen hundred tons. And after a bumper season, they opened a third warehouse in Saint Louis. A third aquarium. De Bluffon, uh, which holds 
four and a half thousand tons. Fish. Saint oh, Louis tons. de Blandford. <laughs> Yeah, four and a half fish. <laughs> Thousand. This last warehouse was set up in 2011, and our story starts the following year. Oh, this is oh, recent. Hang on, hang on. In July I 2012. Could do this 20, 12. Oh, fuck. I was so close. Sorry, Jess. When you hear the maple syrup ice, I'm thinking like, yeah, like 60s. 1880s. Yeah, it does sound like a really old. This but is it's 2012. It's a current thing. It's still, it's still in the in the <laughs> media. Awesome. <laughs> is it the Canadian media? In the Canadian media. That would make sense, no, wouldn't it, Dave? But, it, no, it, it's <laughs> but like, been... I'm wondering if this is like a big story over there where, because I've never heard of it. It, it is, a, but apparently it's a, it's, it made worldwide headlines because it is such an eye-catching story. Um, it's just a wild sounding story and it's just, I think people love it because it's so, it sounds, you, you saw a lot of international reports being like the most Canadian crime ever. I think for a podcast. Because they're famous for maple syrup. A wild so. sounding story is very beneficial. Do you know? Like, if this story was visually provocative, we'd be fucked, you know? I reckon Matt could describe it. But a it. wild sound. Close your eyes now, please. Picture this. Unless you're driving. <laughs> it was a Canadian summer's day when Michael Guevara was doing an annual inventory check at the St. Louis de Bluffon warehouse. St. Louis de Bluffon. Warehouse. It's a small town northeast of Montreal with a population of approximately 900 people. So a very, very small town. You're picturing that in your mind's eye, Jess? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep those fucking eyes closed. Okay. Dave. I was talking to Dave. I can't tell. My eyes are closed. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy that too much. That was very nice. Uh, the w- <laughs> Dave. <laughs> the where- well, is that what you look like when you sleep? Because it's creepy. Look, I, I'm going to make a confession. I have to... <laughs> Close my eyes hard, because otherwise they drift open. I'm not even... I, I sleep... Drift open? You'll find that when we tour this weekend, my eyes just open, and I sleep with them halfway open, and I wake up with dry eyes. So you were laughing at a medical condition, Miss, Miss Perkins. How dare you, Jess? I have to close my eyes hard. Oh, so hard. Close my eyes so hard. <laughs> Good night. Good oh, night, yeah. I'm going to sleep so hard tonight. <laughs> oh. Fucking come at me, dreams. <laughs> that all you got? Uh, <laughs> Unis- unicorns, yeah, that all you got? Oh, that, nah, that's pretty good, actually. No. Yeah, stick with that thing. Yeah, that's oh, good. I'm, I'm winning a gold medal at the Olympics, and Nan's alive. <laughs> yes, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard room. Real hard. Picture this, Dave. The warehouse was floor to ceiling with big barrels of maple syrup. Floor to ceiling. It's in photos of it. It's just like a, it's just chockers. How do you get to the top one? Do they have a big ladder like Belle has in Beauty and the Beast? The way they talk about it with Gavro, it was just like he was climbing across them. So he's just doing an inventory, right? Just checking in. One. Yeah. Two. One a barrel. (laughs) Two a barrel. I don't know why he says it with the A in the bit. Three a barrel. (laughs) It's like that little rhythm to it. A five five a barrel. barrel. A A six six a barrel. barrel. A seven, a seven, a barrel, barrel. more, and then, he gets and, then he get, and then he just like he writes, writes a, more, many, many barrels, <laughs> so many barrels. Um, but he was climbing across the barrels apparently to to count them or whatever, and he wasn't really expecting to find anything out of the ordinary. It was just every year they do this, and it's just checking the barrels, having a great time. Sure, this guy loves counting barrels. Stock take. Yeah. Every, oh, I've done many stock takes. Um. But then all, as he climbed high, he felt that a barrel below him was much lighter than it should have been. So light that he struggled to hold his weight on top of it and it nearly toppled over. This was strange as barrels should weigh over 600 pounds or 270 kilos. And oh. he weighs less than that. He weighs Whoa. much, much less. How do you know? Well, I, I wasn't he imagining was a giant man. Mm, they had his eyes closed hard. Yeah. And you could picture some sort of sumo wrestler climbing barrels. So when it when it sort of toppled, he, uh, he he went up to it and he tapped the barrel and it made like a gong sound. No, he tapped it and he heard a little, hello. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Hey, get out, of there. <laughs> get out of there. I'm, I'll just be a minute. Huh? Well, hey, what are you doing in there? You filling up the barrel? <laughs> no. After, after it wobbling... Then tapping and making a gong sound, he's like, I'm, I'm, maybe I should check. <laughs> like 
this guy's going to do like a nine step And so in the way, I was like, I reckon I would have skipped from the nearly toppling to the lid. Yeah. Straight away. He's going, mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to smell it first. <laughs> yeah. mm. I'm going to listen. <laughs> listen to see if there's maple syrup in there. I don't want to jump to any conclusions. I'm going to sleep out tonight with the barrel. <laughs> see if anything happens. I'm going to buy the barrel dinner and see if it lets me in itself. Oh, so hard, playing hard to get. Okay, I'll just have to open up the lid. Oh, where the, what the fuck? <laughs> it's empty. Where's the fucking serum? I just paid for dinner. What did you buy the barrel? A $60 bottle of wine. Steak? No, just, just liquor. <laughs> <laughs> I only had $60 on my card. His first instinct was that this was just a, a little anomaly. One empty barrel in a warehouse full of full barrels. So it was just empty. It was yeah. just empty. Oh, maybe I was like, hoping there'd be something in there. Maybe there's uh, like like a ransom note, <laughs> or like a an ancient golden artifact. Jess is re- thinks this is going to be a really wild story. <laughs> you <laughs> Re- said it was pretty really, wild. Really Did wild. I say it was wild? Where you syrup, said it was wild. Where syrup has been replaced by ancient golden artifacts. <laughs> yeah. Look, Jess, he said it's going to be a cool story, but don't aim that high. I don't even think I said it was a cool story. You said wild. Did I? You said the word wild. I'm prone to hyperbole. Um. <laughs> Anyway, there's, please wind back your expectations. Never. They are sky high. So tell us more about this artifact. <laughs> what like, did it, it look like? Is it big? Was it solid gold? It, was was it, it of a pharaoh? How did it get to Canada? <laughs> did very, the Queen once own it? I mean, you're asking a lot of questions. Just they'll, they'll, All the answers will be there sorry, as the sorry, report sorry. goes you're right. on. We always jump ahead to the ancient artifact. <laughs> we get so excited. Uh so he, he didn't think there was, he was going to find any more empty ones, but soon more barrels were found. And inside <laughs> them, more ancient <laughs> golden artifacts. Every time did he go through his nine-step process? Tap, tap, tap. It listen, took listen, listen. Fucking ages. <laughs> yeah. A $60 bottle of wine. He's <laughs> broke. Not. I've spent 60 grand. <laughs> a thousand bottles of wine. Um, some of those that uh, seemed to be full were actually full of water as well. Oh. So there were some empty, but many more were just sitting there full of water. Like so when seemingly you, you full. You take your parents' liquor and you top up the bottle with water. <laughs> Very much like that. <laughs> you if you're smart, you do it with tea. Uh, that's good. I get. I've heard. But that would affect the taste more, I would think. Yeah. Your parents aren't idiots. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I'm because you've finished it entirely. <laughs> yeah, Matt it affects, muck around. It, it, it affects the taste because there's no more tea. alcohol in there. Mm. Matt wasn't having a sip. He was drinking the whole <laughs> bottle and going, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Better pop a brew on. <laughs> Matt's making tea again every Sunday, Mum. Every Sunday. I love a cuppa. Yeah. Anyway, I'll just be in the den next to your <laughs> liquor collection. No reason. Ooh. In the den. That is classic affluent ace. <laughs> I did. Imagine having I a did. den. Could not aff- you couldn't afford a fucking a den. den. We had a run. where your stray. lines didn't were. You, didn't you have nine to a bedroom at one stage in your house? <laughs> Four. Four to a bedroom. <laughs> That's all of you. Yeah. Why so, were you all in one room? It was a two bedroom house. And all four kids in one but, room. Yeah, all right. Two bedrooms, but how many dens? We didn't have a den. Oh, they didn't have a den. <laughs> it's bloody bullshit. How quaint. <laughs> How the other half? What is what does a den even mean? Is that like a, s- uh, a second if lounge? You don't know. Yeah, come on. Third lounge. Matt. Yeah, a rumpus room, a formal dining room, a media centre, an informal dining room, pool house, billiard room, library, study, smoking room, greenhouse, <laughs> plus nine bedrooms, and various weapons. Yeah, of course. Of course, there's also secret rooms, but I won't talk about them on the show. Obviously. Sex stuff. And that's just the bungalow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so nearly... Why would the bungalow have a pool house, you fucking idiot? <sighs> We're very people, one. <laughs> people, you know, they have, they have money. They don't know what to do with people, it. People, people. Uh, people, please. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> so nearly 540,000 gallons of syrup had been stolen. Fuck. Which is a, it was a really big chunk of the strategic that's reserve. Like, that's like millions of litres. Okay, thank you. I was going to ask what a gallon, how much a gallon is. I'm saying, and, and millions and millions of dollars worth. Um, and that's how one of the largest agricultural crime investigations began. The FPAC headquarters were alerted and the cops were brought in. Is there a specific branch of the police for agriculture? No, for maple syrup, I imagine, in Canada. They're that ah, serious about it. Very good. Like us with beer. 
uh, detective. Get uh, the beer squad out. Detective Smith, uh, beer squad. There's this, there's this fun Vanity Fair article. Um, was it fun? You shut, you shut your That's god. That's so fun. The, 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 there was this vanity. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. This fun Vanity Fair article, and it asked, it Vanity asked, fun. Vanity fun, more like it. Funity fun. Uh, and ask some great questions about the mi- mystery, like who would steal syrup, and even if some sick bastard wanted to, what would he carry it away in? How far could he get? Good I'm, questions. I'm wondering all these things. That is so fun. It's fun, man. You better. That's watch, fun. You better watch it. I'm really hyped. I'm gonna just stay quiet for a what, little bit. What you sound a little drunk. Yeah, you totally do. Have you been drinking? I have, found have you been into your mum's liquor cabinet in the den again? Shay, you don't know me. <laughs> you don't know me, mum. I don't live with my mum. Go drink a fucking tea, mum. I mean, I miss bourbon. her every day. She's not dead. I just don't live with her. Yeah, but Nan's alive in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cohen, who wrote the Vanity Fair article, went on to say that there was something stirring about making off with all that syrup. It boggled the mind. It felt less like a crime than a prank. What you might do to your brother if you were <laughs> an all-powerful and he had a lot of syrup. And you wanted to steal two million litres of syrup. I really, I really enjoyed Cohen's work there. Uh, it's, a, it's a prank. Uh, I've stolen uh, <laughs> several hundred million dollars of syrup. Gotcha. But I mean, he, you're making a joke of a joke that he already made, Dave, all right? Not to know and you, but... Hey, hey, Vanity Fair, there's no joke there. That is not a joke. He was having fun. I don't think he was. He uh, he spoke to a uh, a hotel waiter in Montreal, and the the waiter said, "Syrup is heavy and sticky. How do you hide it? Who do you get to smuggle it? Down Where can you sell it? Down your pants. It's like stealing salt out of the sea. Put down your pants. Down your pants. Absolutely. That's how you, that's how you smuggle it. You put it down your pants. It's like stealing salt out of the sea. Yeah, I don't think it's like that at all. <laughs> I don't think it's like at putting all. it in It's like pants. stealing syrup I mean, out of barrels, but... Yeah, if you can steal salt out of sea, you could probably get syrup out of trees yourself. Mm. Is that where syrup comes from? Yeah, it's sap. Is it tree blood? I think it's like sap, and then they, they do stuff to it, and then it like thins it out, and then maybe it's like whatever that... You know, I can't tell you all the secrets. It sounds like you're working for them. But anyway, what a bloody mystery. Any theories at this point? Because I'm about to tell you what happened. I'm staying quiet. Matt, it's got to be an inside job. You can't... Just steal that. Inside job is good, Dave. Without people knowing. You want to build on inside job? For half a million gallons? It's ridiculous. It's not like if someone stole 10 barrels and suddenly Barry was having a bit more pancakes than usual, you'd be like, all right, well, fucking Barry did it. Barry. You you know my theory. It wasn't Barry, but good guess. Jess, you get the final guess. You know, you you asked me if I wanted to build on inside job. Mm -hmm. It's an inside pants job. (laughs) It happened inside pants. Yeah, they, they put the maple syrup down their pants yep. and just <laughs> well, walked that, on out. That feels like my nightmare. But yeah. like pants with a, a like a tight cuff oh, at the bottom. Oh my god! So oh, that's the worst. <laughs> well, like some sort of scuba diving outfit, but that keeps no. the liquid in. Yeah. Like they've lined themselves with baking what those, paper. What are those pants you wear when you go fishing? Gum boots. <laughs> <laughs> they fill gum boots. It's brilliant. My favorite heist is when it ends with them. <laughs> Walking out the front door. Yeah, that's yeah. It, 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 of the maple syrup shop. <laughs> Doing a shoey of maple syrup on oh. the front doorstep. Yeah, that's my theory. You, Celebratory shoey, all right, <laughs> or a, or a, or a gumby in in uh, Dave's case. Pants. Hey, what better pants. time than right now in the middle of the episode to talk about MVMT movement watches? You don't pronounce it MVMT. I'm sh- I've been strictly told by a, a note here, <laughs> and um, and I never will again. It's you just, will. Um, but anyway, you, yeah, we all got watches. It was really cool. Yeah, they, uh, Movement uh, sent us a, a sweet watch each, and I love mine. I'm wearing it right now. It is, it's so cool. I've been wearing it every day since. Because you, well, you weren't previously a watch person, were no, you? No, I've become a watch person yeah. because of this. Yep. And not a day has gone past where I haven't been complimented on this watch. Right. So my self confidence is through the fucking roof. It's such a good conversation <laughs> starter too. It's such. I didn't even listen to you because I'm so arrogant now because I have such a cool watch. <laughs> Whatever da- you said. Dave, I thought we agreed that if we were going to do any sort of ads that you you wouldn't be gross and too like shoving it down the people's throats. Maybe they don't want to buy a watch. Well, they're fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah, look. laughs> Anyway, there, there is a deal with all the Planet Broadcasting shows this week. Uh, if you go to 
mvmt.com slash do go on. You get 15% off today with free shipping, free returns. March is real. I also have, I've not worn a watch since high school. So three thousand. And years I ago. feel look at me now. Do I look like a gentleman? You, you look, look like, like a cool like guy. You know what's mm. up. Hello guys. Sorry, somewhere to be. I'm important <laughs> he's, now. He's tapping at his watch. Yeah. And can I just say it is it feels so cool to be on the in the same league as people like Roger Federer, Tiger Woods who have watch sponsors <laughs> and now we do. <laughs> But we have, but unlike them, you don't have to spend two hundred grand to wear their watch. These watches start at like a hundred dollars, and yeah. you can look like me, oh and God. I feel Dave, great. Don't, no, Dave, Dave, no. Dave, no, 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 no. You can look like uh, you could look like Roger Federer, Roger but Federer. just with a. I was trying to think of like the better looking one on the podcast. I was like, we're all uggos. Yeah, look, we're not all uggos. Hey, if Roger Federer was on this podcast, he'd wear a cool watch. We <laughs> we've recently had a, a t shirt designed up with illustrations of our faces. <laughs> And the artist, Nick Kappa, who, who uh, also does a podcast in this studio, he <laughs> said, what did he say? We're the most lopsided bunch of <laughs> 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 This can't be in the ad. <laughs> well, now this is what you get. When you when you come to do go on to um, shield your products, you will get, you'll get classiness mm-hmm. that matches your classy products. I will bleep out that <laughs> and that one too. Uh, but... That, but- Long story short, they are really, really cool watches. They are actually affordable and they look cool. So check them out. Why not get a sweet discount while you're at it? Their, yeah, their whole point was to go. They were they wanted to wear cool watches. These guys, a couple of guys in America started. They were like, we want to we want to have cool watches, but we're broke people like uh, Matt Stewart and idiots like Jess Perkins Brutal. <laughs> and really Brutal, good, but and true. really good looking people like Dave Wongi. Okay. So they sort of they they How decided to make there? make sick watches. Uh, for, for, anyway. <laughs> anyway. We'll, we'll start again. I'm a really good looking guy with a good looking watch <laughs> and you could be a good looking watch, but not necessarily as good looking as I. Well, that's definitely getting cut out. <laughs> anyway, check out, check out the website, mvmt.com slash do go on. On with the pod. <laughs> so the investigation was initially led by the Quebec police before the Royal Mounties came in and got involved. Yes. Just making it... Super Canadian. Did you see Dudley Do, right? Yeah, I reckon I did back in yeah. the day with Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Fraser. Fraser. What a guy. Poor guy. Looks like he's fallen on hard times. He was much better in Tarzan. According to one photo I that's mean George of shown a lot. Is that what you mean? I've seen him in a few interviews. He's not looking too great. All right, mate. Well, we don't all have great watches and great faces. <laughs> well, I judge people that don't. <laughs> all right, I've fallen east. The the investigation was broad and costly. Um, they didn't have a lot to go on, but they chased up every lead. Any talk of black market syrup, they were all over it. Can you say it was broad and, and costly again? Just trust me, it'll be worth it. It was broad and costly. Well, I'm a costly broad. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. Uh, I'm not sure if... Can we just get, get Jess's mic? Yep, it's off. I okay, did say go. I'd be quiet. I'm sorry. It's now officially off. Uh, it was so it was a huge investigation. Around three hundred people were questioned, and forty search warrants were taken out. And it was all worth it because it led to the arrests of twenty six people. Um, those twenty six arrests led to varying results. Some charges were drops. Some charges were dropped. Some were acquitted. Uh, and I believe there is ongoing legal action actually in this case. It's that recent that it's still happening. So I should say allegedly a lot, probably. But these are all all, all this is from um, court reports. I'm just wondering what what you, what their plan was. Was it extortion? Were they going to try and sell it? Yeah, you know, I I think this probably tell tells us how current it is. There's not even a Wikipedia page dedicated to it yet. We could be that Wikipedia page. We could be that. Wikipedia we could be a source. Page. We could be a source. Someone we, do that. That'd be cool. Yeah. We could be a source or a syrup. Yeah, no, I'm going back off. Sorry. <laughs> Don't know uh, how she turned herself back on there. Though uh, court action is still ongoing now, it does seem like the investigation was pretty efficient, um, obviously, with those arrests. Um, within the year of the crime being discovered, one of the leading investigations, Lieutenant Guy Lepon of the <laughs> Quebec Police, told reporters uh, that they were well on their way to busting the case wide open, saying they were basically inside guys. Dave suggested. 
The leader wasn't with the Federation, but he had access to the warehouse that would not attract any suspicion. The leader, Lapont spoke of, was Avic Caron. This wasn't a heist that Caron went searching for, though. Rather, it landed right on his doorstep when in 2011, the FPAC rented a warehouse co-owned by his wife. That warehouse was the one at St. Louis de Blofond. Man, it feels like I'm saying a French word there. I'd, it would make my dreams come true if I'm anywhere near it. Uh, I like how our reporter Graham Hamilton from the National Post put it. He said um, it was as if he had been handed the keys to a bank vault. Karen almost immediately began looking for black market buyer who could convert the syrup-filled barrels into cash in his pocket. And what's this dude's name? FPAC. Uh, the, no, FPAC's the... <laughs> sorry, yeah, that's it. But <laughs> it's just hard to follow when you're saying these French names and you're like, sorry, what was that a word? Because he's saying them so perfectly. What's the what's the Avic Caron? Avic. Avic. A V I K. And you mentioned pocket at the end there. Perhaps a pocket <laughs> in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Perkins, you've done it again. <laughs> well, I don't need to go on. I don't know Do you know that's, wrong that's how he started early on. He just took a pocket full down to the pub. Hey, hey! Put your hand in my right pocket. You will not. Not be again. You will not be disappointed this time. It's pure. This time. <laughs> it's pure. I'll give it to you for a buck. Or that's a, good or stuff. all of that for a, a pint of beer. <laughs> um, soon after FPAC started filling the warehouse with syrup back in 2011, a friend introduced Carol to Richard Valeros. I don't know. I have no idea how to pronounce <laughs> that. A man who made his money buying and selling syrup, often bending the rules and getting around the Federation system. He was, uh, this sort of role was, was known as being a barrel roller. Get that was sort out. of the slang term for, he'd take it and he'll sort of like, almost like rebadging it. I'd love to see his LinkedIn profile. <laughs> barrel roller. Barrel roller. <laughs> 2009 to 2011. 2009. What a guy. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I didn't understand. Turn what? me off again. Did you? Is it? What is it tonight? I don't know. You, have you had like pure maple syrup? Did you know this episode was coming out? Yeah. It's like you're buzzing. Yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm going to sit back here. I'm going to sit back here now. No, nah, I'm enjoying it. I'm no, sure. No, the listeners are not. <laughs> I reckon, oh, well, I'm pretty sure some of them will be hating it, but some of them will be fucking loving it. And the ones who hate it will be the ones who get in contact. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jess, <laughs> shut the fuck up! Like, righto. <laughs> ah, they're the, they're the they're the vocal minority. Uh, during the autumn of 2011, a truck started arriving at the Saint Louis de Bluffon warehouse. One of these times, I'll get that right, I reckon. Mm. It would load up barrels of syrup from the spring harvest. From there, the barrels would be driven to Raymond Valero's sugar shack. Uh, <laughs> a sugar? Sh- have you heard of sugar shacks? I hadn't heard of a sugar shack. What's a sugar shack? Sugar shack is a small cabin where the sap is boiled down to make maple syrup. Isn't that also what you call your balls, Dave? <laughs> oh. Sugar shack, get no, a load of sugar sack. Get a load of my sugar shack. Nah, it's shack, mate. <laughs> sugar shack. When the shacks are rocking. <laughs> Leave my balls alone. I got issues. Stop rocking them. <laughs> Stop rocking Come my on. balls. I'm trying to sleep. I'm already closing my eyes really hard. I can't both close my eyes and settle my balls hard at the same time. It's one or the other. My... My eyes are closed. The balls get bloody out of control. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird thing that I got. Oh, I didn't know that balls did that. Yeah, well. God, I'm missing out. <laughs> <laughs> you sure are. You sure are. It's, not a, it's a curse. It's not a blessing. <laughs> Double-edged sword. Uh, sugar shack. So, But is, is no one noticing that there's a truck that's rocking up and taking a lot of barrels away? Is there security a, cameras and stuff? Oh. Uh, Interesting. I'm, I'm going to talk about security in a little bit. Um, the so so Ray, you would have noticed that with my perfect pronunciation that Raymond and Richard share the same name. Raymond is Richard's father, the barrel roller's dad. So he's, it's his sugar shack where they're where they're taking uh, the barrels to, and from there at the sugar shack, that's wh- uh, where they'd empty the barrels. Siphoning them out, basically like they were siphoning out petrol from a car <laughs> with their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you only have to get to get the flow going. Yeah, and then um, they'd fill them with water from a nearby creek before returning them to the warehouse. And what are they tipping them into, though? Uh, they're tipping them into less uh, sanitary um, vestibules, like co- coke bottles. 
No, they're, they're other, other barrels. But Toilets. But apparently... <laughs> That's really unsanitary. <laughs> one of the judges in a case was mentioning how they were not um, particularly food safe. So a toilet. And there were there was some talk that... I don't think a toilet, no, because that would... I mean, what would the point of that be? To, well, flushing oh. it down. Oh, no one it's would, funny when Dave says it. <laughs> That's interesting. No one would ever question it, though, would they? Would anyone ever question that? No one ever be like, "Oh, you uh, keep." What's this brown goo in the toilet? Yeah, people. No one wants to ask that question. (laughs) No one does. Trust me. Wait, what are you suggesting that they? They're flushing, like you know what? Flush it, and then somewhere down the sewer, the the, the buyer is the only sort of barren type thing that I'm associating with this is the beer barren episode of The Simpsons where Homer bowled. Bowl, bowling balls oh. full of liquor, yeah. and I'm thinking that they're flushing toilets full of maple syrup to some to they're another putting location. Putting toilets down toilets. No, no, no. They're flushing maple syrup down the toilet, but the toilet is actually hooked up to an exclusive oh, line, right? And it's pouring into Moe's ha- bar. You have to make sure you're using the right toilet. <laughs> that makes sense. You always have to full flush because half a flush is not getting that gluggy liquid down. That's an Australian thing, Dave. I believe. The half and full flush is an Australian invention. Do you know that? Really? Yeah. God, we've made some good things, haven't we? List them. Hills Hoist. All right. Done. Wi-Fi. Vegemite. When was the last time you saw a Hills Hoist? It's the thing that people always name about There's Australia. Sheep. There's one in my apartment's backyard. All right. That's, um, that's hard to argue against. Paul that. Hogan. Tax fraud. Mm. Allegedly. Uh <laughs> In some ways, this was a, a victimless uh, crime. In other more <laughs> accurate ways, it was a very victimful crime. <laughs> yeah. um, with they, they stole tens of millions of dollars with, from someone. With, someone. Yeah, thousands of law-abiding syrup producers being the victims. That was, I think that's my joke for the report. That was so good. I mean, Dave talked over it, but that was... Matt, that joke was so funny. I, I all, actually really enjoyed it. Cutting all this out. That was so funny. You're is, so this funny. This is all on the floor. And you're wasting everyone's time Fuck. right now. Fuck. I'm in a weird place. Is this not fun for you? I'm having a great time. <laughs> in the winter of 2011-2012, the creek near Raymond's sugar shack froze over, which meant a change of plans was required. As Come that on was down to we... Raymond's sugar shack. We got all the sugar you need. We got... <laughs> Are you okay? I'm <laughs> doing an ad for Raymond's Sugar Shack. <laughs> so, I mean, you really paid it out there. Though. Yeah. Because I couldn't think of types of sugar. <laughs> we got, you got Brown. your raw sugar. Brown. We got... Uh, sugar cane. <laughs> Sexual sugar. What's the, what's the really fine one? Refined sugar. <laughs> no, it's an even finer one. So it's like a sugar. Brown sugar? We got sugar syrup. We got, <laughs> we got gummy bears. <laughs> That's the type of sugar. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm just, I was going away now. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've said that a few <laughs> times. I know. Uh, um, so, yeah, fr- uh, the the creek there froze over, so they had to come up with another plan. Um, and they... Tran- what, what, because they couldn't wash out the barrels? They couldn't fill the barrels. Oh, sorry, yep. that, that's where they were getting the water to fill the barrels. So they found another warehouse in Montreal. And but the plan just kept on going unhindered. It was just like it sounds like there was never any suspicion. No one, no one cared. But because okay, you say it's worth more per barrel than oil, but this wouldn't happen in the oil industry. Yeah, you couldn't just drive in, fill up your truck full of barrels of oil, and drive it to your own warehouse. Yeah, tip them out and fill them with water and take them back. Take them back. There'd be a couple of questions. Yeah, and you couldn't do this. How many barrels do they lose? Uh, thousands. That you couldn't do this hundreds of times. Yeah, over months and months, day after day. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a, it's, it's, it's pretty. It's wild. <laughs> this is so wild. And when are you going to get to that golden magical treasure? Artifact. Uh, that that will be later. That'll Thank be you. Much later. Good. But it, this is sort of what you you've been alluding to. How how do you picture the warehouse? Because when I'm thinking about it, like one of the main strategic stockpiles of this pure Canadian, like super important, supposedly super important, um, expensive. Syrup. What What are you ma- imagining? I was sort of imagining like this Fort Knox kind of. Yeah, you know, yeah, like something machine with machine guns. Uh, I wouldn't say machine guns. I reckon like barbed wire fence, po- possibly like uh, guards patrolling a little bit. I was imagining it in a big stable. <laughs> Were so, you, we all went different ways there. You were closer, I think, Jess, because it turned out that they were pretty cheap on security FPAC. 
Um, during a later trial, Patrick McTude, uh, <laughs> one of the owners of the warehouse in Saint Louis de Blapont, testified that FPAC had shown little to no concern for the security of the stockpile, saying that the warehouse had a fence locked with a padlock, the doors locked, and a foreman who lived on the site, but the Federation declined to pay for additional security. He went on to say that otherwise, as far as security goes, the Federation knew very well there wasn't any. It wasn't fortified. There were no security cameras or guards. What the hell? Not even cameras. In many ways, this did happen in the 1880s. Yeah. It's ridiculous. In a barn. That's what it feels like in some ways. And also the sugar shack. How many barrels can that fit? I'm imagining like nine. Well, yeah, I guess... Well, that's... Casting sugar. Casting sugar. That's what I was going for. We've got casting sugar. Brown sugar. Ray does his own ads. He's no good. Come on down to Raymond's Sugar Shack. Or oh, we've got all your sugary needs. Uh, uh, remember, bulk discounts available if you mention the code word Sugar Daddy. <laughs> and as as we always say here at Sugar Shack, uh, Raymond, what's the catchphrase again? Sugar baby, all right. <laughs> Ooh, sugar baby, all right. And Raymond, only, he only got one take, didn't he? <laughs> what? Well, yeah, he only needed one take, Sorry. Dave. Yeah. It wasn't that he only got, like, he booked the studio for an hour. It was a green screen. Um, but uh, he only needed the one. So with no one, no security or anything, no one suspecting anything was up. They just became more and more brazen. Eventually, they just drained the barrels directly in the warehouse. <laughs> oh my god! In the end, they just painted over the sign that just said, "You know, ours now, ours, <laughs> mine." They knocked on the foreman and said, "Hey, you're fired." <laughs> oh, okay. Well, get, get your stuff and get out. Actually, don't get your stuff. That's ours now. <laughs> I've just spray painted my name on it. Ours. That dog spray painted it. Dog. I don't think it can breathe. <laughs> I killed your dog. Now you can have that. You can, you can take care of that dead body. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to look after a dead dog. Well, yours, mate. Get it out of here. Um, according to court documents, uh, of the 16,224 barrels stored, I, I only just found this out before, so if I said some other number earlier, this one's probably more accurate because this was I got this directly off a Canadian uh, law site that Megan uh, sent me a link to. Because she was my, um, she was my... Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Se- she was my Philip Seymour Fuck, Hoffman. that took forever. Sorry, Megan. What's the actual word? Tribute. Tribute. Jesus. This is just the tribute. <laughs> so according to court documents, of the 16,224 barrels stored, 9,571 barrels were emptied. 9,000... That's over half. 571... What that is insane. Which represented a total of five million nine hundred and thirty five thousand two hundred and fifty pounds of maple syrup. Whoa. Valued at approximately seventeen point eight million Canadian Whoa. dollars. Whoa. Which I think is more hey, would be th- twenty something Australian. Do you think million. that's funny now, Vanity Fair? You prick. still having fun. Still pranking your brother, you dog. It's so fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a good prank. He was having a bit of fun. So fun. I think he was an American writer. And he, you know, mm. I think the American definitely... Different uh, concept of fun. Their their media was definitely looking at this as being, oh, these quirky little Canadians mm. with their little funny crimes, which I guess is what we're doing. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We're as bad as Americans. As no, we? I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. What would be the equivalent in Australia of, of the maple so, syrup heist? Oh. The Hills Hoist heist. Oh, that's good. Would it be like a dingo, dingo baby? No, that happened, and it was not that funny. Oh, I'm not saying that dingoes were <laughs> heisting babies. I meant like it'd be like dingo, dingo like pup. dingoes' offspring. A pup. Yeah, but we don't really. That's not really an industry here, is it? What about just Vegemite factory being Vegem- broken it'd into? It'd be a Vegemite factory. Mm-hmm. Imagine trying to siphon Vegemite. <laughs> With <laughs> keep sucking. <laughs> It is thick. I didn't like that sound. Oh no, I don't like that. They Sam- call they call Vegemite black gold. They call it they call it black oil. Texas guess tea. Uh, they call it black oil. Black oil, as opposed to well, but, clear. I mean, well, I mean that was my joke. Olive but... oil is clear. You oh, <laughs> he's packing. Yeah, I've uh, <laughs> been stealing a bit of Vegemite from uh, McDonald's myself. Where was that? In his pants. I don't even. I've just pulled out a little tub of Vegemite. Do you think v- McDonald's around the world have Vegemite? Why were you at McDonald's? 
without me. <laughs> that <laughs> question changed in the middle. I know. Yeah, when good. we get, when we fly to Sydney together, can I get hash browns at McDonald's? On, at the airport. No, we're not we're not plugging McDonald's. Yeah, this episode brought to you by uh, Movement Watches, <laughs> not McDonald's. Um, so from there, Valère sold the stolen syrup to a man named oh, Etienne Saint Pierre. Nailed it. Uh, or like if I was reading that out phonetically, it'd be Etienne Saint Pierre, who rebranded it so that it appeared to be from New Brunswick rather than Quebec. So Quebec, in the Quebec world, that's like pretty tight. That's all F pack. New Brunswick, which is not far away, that's like that's the that's the free new world. Oh right, that's the anyone's. anyone's it's a, a little bit looser over there, but it's nowhere near as big of a of a market and stuff there. Raymond Villiers, his son Richard, and Etienne Saint Pierre were all sent to trial, and that trial occurred only last year. Oh wow. During the trial, Saint Pierre told the jury, "You can't prove what what tree that syrup came from," <laughs> which seems like a dumb tactic to me. Yeah, he was pleading that he was mentally ill. He was saying he was not guilty, but he's and he's going, he's like taunting them basically. I, I reckon I would have said something like, "Surely you can prove that syrup I have is not the stolen syrup. I'm sure science could somehow prove that it's from New Brunswick, not there." You know, you'd be playing dumb, not going. I oh, know you can't prove it. I oh, know d- you can't. <laughs> I dare you to find me guilty. I fucking dare you. I might be reading it in a different tone. Um, I've killed before and I'll kill again. <laughs> What's that, sir? And I've also stolen... Ma- I mean, no, I haven't. Mm. haven't stolen maple syrup. I've just killed. Certainly not in this case. I've done it. Look, I've stolen a lot of maple syrup, but not this particular thousands and thousands of pounds. No. I stole different thousands of pounds. During the trial... Saint Pierre also admitted that he wasn't a fan of FPAC and that he resented their <laughs> control of the market, suggesting they are like a are like the mafia. I was hoping you were gonna say that he he said that he was not a fan of maple syrup and because of that Fuck I it. didn't do it. I didn't do, I'd look I'll try maple syrup. Yuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh yuck, get Couldn't. it out of my face. Yuck. <laughs> Couldn't stand to be near it. I'm practically allergic. How could I steal five thousand pounds? As if I'd of siphon it? this. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, yuck. But really, he, he said that he can't stand them and that they're, they're that's not looking good for him, though, is it? No, not really, no. Um, buying it from Valer meant he didn't have to go through the Federation he despised so much. Oh. So this was, he was you know, going through a barrel roller. Sure. In court, Richard Valer uh, admitted that he did fill the barrels with water, but said he was forced to by an armed man who apparently threatening, threateningly told him, I know where you live. In that accent. And he did this over several months. (laughs) (laughs) I'll still know where you live. But to be honest, they formed quite a nice bond. (laughs) They hung out a lot, had a lot of lunch breaks together. Yeah, it was quite nice. Like they'd they'd chat about the footy and the the weather we're having and then he'd just every now and then be like, just by the way, I've still got that gun. (laughs) (laughs) I know where you live, mainly because I pick you up for work every morning at 9am. Thank you for always bringing a coffee out into the car with with you for me. That's very nice. Appreciate that. You got access to sugar, and I like it. Uh, they're, they're my favorite kind of excuses um, or, or alibis for something. Is um, no, I'm I def- I did me. everything you're accusing me of. Obviously, you've got a lot of proof, and I can't argue against that. I definitely did it, but I didn't want to. Yeah. A guy that I can't name or tell you anything more about said I have to do it, and yeah, I'm so innocent. So, can I go can home I, is this, now? Is that enough? Sorry to have wasted your time. I, I wish I was guilty too. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem that uh, that he was able to identify the man. Um, and the story didn't wash with the jury as he was found guilty of the theft. Also, fraud and trafficking stolen goods. His father... I'm going to start that again because I sort of... Reset something that I already said. Sorry, future Matt. Um, anyway, it seems like uh, this story about the man with the gun who, you know, allegedly exists as a real human. Um, apparently, that didn't wash with the jury because he was, yeah. Hmm. But you seem shocked. Hmm. I'm, my mouth is agape. Did you think my next paragraph was going to be all about the man with the gun and yeah. how, how he did it? Do you know what I'd and do? How, and how they tracked him down. I'd say, like, I don't know what he looks like. 
um, and I can't really describe his voice, but I remember what he smells like. So very syrupy. Do you want me to <laughs> describe that to you in great detail? He smells like Lynx Africa. So just find anybody yeah. who uses that body spray and um Oh no. The lead suspect is a thirteen year old boy <laughs> in gym. <laughs> oh no oh. <laughs> oh, oh miss Look at him. He's got syrup all over him, he's sticky. He's got sticky fingers. Oh, that's just being a teenage boy. Oh, I just meant because they're messy when they eat their lunch, Dave. Come on. I think that's what we all meant, Dave. What were you meaning? Yeah, lunch. So so sticky. His father Raymond was also found. So uh, did I did I mention that he was found guilty of the theft, fraud, and trafficking? That was. I love that the jury Richard. took him up on his dare. I dare you. Go and on. then they found him guilty. He went fuck that backfired. Yeah. All right. Well played. No, I, I doubled I, you. I did ask for that. His father, Raymond, was also found guilty, uh, him on possession of stolen goods and of fraud with the intention to traffic. And Saint-Pierre was found guilty of fraud and trafficking stolen goods. The guilty verdicts were handed down just uh, 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 last year, like I said, when the trial happened. But only a few months ago, the sentencing occurred. And this is, as it was reported in the Canadian press, this is how the sentences went down. Superior Court Justice Raymond Pronovals sentenced Richard Valles to eight years in prison. It does sound a bit like you don't have permission to say their names, so you're sort of redacting them as you say it, but really, <laughs> you're just losing confidence. <laughs> uh, so, eight years. Eight years, also confiscated 606000 Dollars from him and find him a further nine point four million. Oh, that's Jesus. a sizey fine, oh. big fine in the end there. Um, so he was convicted of the theft, fraud, and receiving stolen goods. Will have to pay back the money over a ten year period or risk having his sentence increased by six years. So he's got to pay nine hundred grand a year whilst living in prison, <laughs> making no money. Yeah, that's I don't know. How, I don't math. quite know how. Or is it like they're like, he's sold, he's made so much money from these crimes, he's just got it, and it's just accruing interest in his account. Yeah. I'm assuming that's not the case. So, yeah, I don't know. How do you come across... <laughs> $900,000 a year. It's like, so it's like, be rich, and you don't have to be in jail for another six years. Yeah. He's like, well, if I was rich, I wouldn't have done this crime in the first place. What happened to democracy in Canada? It used to be a beacon. The other two men, Raymond Villar and Etienne... Saint-Pierre, were each sentenced to jail terms of two years minus one day for some reason to be served in the community as well as three years probation. Raymond <laughs> Valera not, not a sentence at all. will be required to pay $9,840 within one year or go to jail for six months while Saint-Pierre must pay $1.3 million over 15 years or be in prison for five years. It seems like such a weird... It all seems so random. Mm. And I love how you will be punished and go to jail amongst society and live in society. That's not a You naughty, naughty, naughty boy. boy. Also, one of you pays nine grand, one of you pays nine million. <laughs> Work it out amongst yourselves. <laughs> Either or. Draw straws. Oh, shit. The, um, one, the one, the, one of the key characters who I, we talked about right up the top, um... I haven't mentioned for a little while. What 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 do you think happened in Caron, the man who allegedly kicked it all off? Oh, he pleaded. Unlike the others, he pleaded guilty. Um, and the presiding judge Jacques Lecourcier noted that the court regard. This is what the judge said: the court regards this matter as the perfect illustration of the maxim "opportunity makes the thief," highlighting how none of it may have happened if the FPAC hadn't rented his wife's warehouse, basically. All of this happened because of the opportunity. Opportunity makes a thief. I've never even heard that, maxim. I like no, that, No, it though. does sound a little bit like um, uh, like an excuse that doesn't really hold up. It's like, well, uh, if you never even went to that bank that day, you may not have held it up with a gun. So, anyway, we, we all would have done it. Yeah. We all would have done it. It's the bank's fault for existing. Yeah. Uh, J- Judge Jacques went on to sentence Caron harshly despite his guilty plea, uh, calling him the instigator of the heist and handing down a five-year prison term and a $1.2 million fine. 
On hearing his punishment, Caron exploded with anger, yelling that he had been misled by his lawyer into pleading guilty. He swore at the judge, banged on a wall, and wrestled with a guard who tried to restrain him. Good, good. Yes. That's how you, that's how you get him. That's how I, you do I, I really like I really <laughs> like the image because it's just like he's he's like pleaded guilty. He's been told by his lawyer if you plead guilty you'll, you'll get it. So it's like, yes, Sean, I'm guilty. I'm very sorry, and I, and I throw myself at the mercy of the court. Great. Well, that's five years in prison and one point two million dollars charge. You fucking what? <laughs> you dog. <laughs> <laughs> Banging on a wall. <laughs> Sir, please stop banging on the wall. Please. They're so polite in Canada. Please, sir. Please. That was some great acting, Matt. Thank I you. believed that. No, I was there. I was in it. You're a method actor. So that's it. That's the that's the story. It's still the um a lot of those guys are appealing. The the ones that didn't call he They're very appealing. Caron <laughs> Caron was like <laughs> that's, that's real good stuff. Caron was like <laughs> um apparently he was like going, I wouldn't have pleaded guilty, I was misled. And he's like, give me a trial. I want to. I want this to go to trial. And the judge is like, no, nah, it's too late, mate. And, <laughs> and that's why I was like, fucking Jesus. Anyway. Um, well, but uh, yeah, I think. They, just have they found the man that was holding them at gunpoint, never, and forcing them over not, several months to as, steal millions uh, of dollars uh, of, of uh, not oil but uh, syrup? As well, far as I know, they haven't. But I think this is the kind of this is a, a topic that is going to be ongoing. I think it's actually. Um, it's it's been uh, the rights of the story have been bought for a movie. Great, um, Nicholas Cage is uh, set to cast. It no, well. it's actually Leonardo Jason, DiCaprio, Jason Segel, Liam Hemsworth, Jason, Jason Segel. Really? Mm. So I guess, which makes it sound like I it love must Jason be more of a Siegel. comedy. Maybe I'll get a romantic angle in there. He's he can do which serious. is interesting because he was off the Muppets and we we talked about the Muppets last week. I love Jason Segel. I think I was imagining Jason Bateman this whole time. There you go. But yeah, so there <laughs> it is. If, we, if you'd like to, Matt, read out the description of the man with the gun, maybe we could circulate that to our Canadian listeners and they can be on the lookout for him. But more importantly, what did he smell like? Yeah, Matt, just... Lynx Africa. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so be on the lookout for a man with a gun that smells like Lynx Africa. And please call the Canadian Mounties. Mm-hmm. So it, se- it seemed like such a bizarre crime, right? And the way it, uh, people were talking about it early before I found out how it all went down, I'm like, wow, this is going to be fascinating. But in the end, it was really... More of a st- less of a story about of like an excitement or anything, more about just like bad security and painstaking work, Ter- sucking out such maple bad syrup. security. Yeah, they just had to put in some cameras and check them sporadically, and they would have found out what was going on. You know where they have really good security though? At Raymond's Sugar Shack, <laughs> we got CCTV. Yeah, there's a man we with got a, dogs. There's a man with a gun inside the shack, telling people mm. to fill barrels full of oil right. syrup. I keep yeah. thinking of oil because that's actually a, a valuable liquid. <laughs> After I was um, well into the r- research and the report, I found out that it's actually uh, not the only maple syrup pass that's ever happened over there. There's actually been a few different ones. So huh. I'm, I'm hoping I picked the right one. Uh, this is the largest one, but uh, there was another um, noteworthy one. Was it one in 1880, like I imagine? Uh, I imagine the early ones were 1880. There was one in 2006 where thieves took around $1.3 million of syrup um, from the stockpile also, or one of the different stockpiles. So that was... Five one that was in dispute, actually. So that was five years earlier and they still didn't put cameras up. <laughs> but the, well, this this was from, a, from... I think it was from a different um, source. But apparently, uh, according to Lieutenant Le Pont, that investigation remains open. So that's a mystery, maybe a future. No mystery to this one. Unless those appeals are successful, then maybe maybe that man with the gun thing is... That definitely is a mystery if that's real. Yeah, but it feels like bullshit. <laughs> I mean, you know. I like to believe in the man with the gun. I dare Who you to... Who knows f- where you live. I dare you to find him guilty. <laughs> You're guilty, mate. <laughs> <laughs> stop banging... <laughs> please, sir, stop banging on the wall. Please. I will not. Oh, well, that's the report. Thanks for having me. I'll see you later. Bloody good stuff, Canada. Great job, Maddie. Sorry about the hyper. Sorry. No, that's fine. It's like you've crashed a lot over there. Yeah. <laughs> what? Can you tell me what you took? Or Not on air. Do we need to keep the airways clear and that sort of stuff? If you wouldn't mind. Roll you on your side. Yeah. Don't let me be alone. <laughs> but I'm so lonely. <laughs> 
Well, we'd like to dedicate that episode to the entire country of Canada and also thank our Canadian listeners. But we also like to thank... Especially Megan, who suggested the Thanks, topic. Megan. Or Megan? Do they say Megan in Canada? Oh, maybe they say Megan. M- Megan Thanks, Elizabeth. Megan. Thanks, uh, Meg. But we also like to thank everyone that supports the show over at Patreon. Patreon.com slash DoGoOnPod is where you get all your Do Go On extra needs. By donating to our show, you get uh, bonus episodes, a uh, little newsletter from Match, and shout-outs on the show, which we would like to do now t- uh, to thank a couple of people each. You want to kick us off, Bopper? Oh, I would love to. And I would like to thank someone that I feel like I've mentioned before because I think they suggested a topic because you don't forget a name like P. Basta. P. Basta. That's oh, a great name. It, it's honestly one of the names. Mr. That just, P. Basta. <laughs> it just sticks in my head, that name. Mr. Rover Lover. From New York. New York. New York. I'm, I'm walking, walking here. here. God, we're awful. Is that New York? Yeah, but I was told over the weekend that that line was improvised. Wow, that's great. It's a great line. From Back to the Future 2? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoa, what? I'm walking it. And the other person I would also like to thank, other than P-Basta, uh, I would also really like to thank, from Corby in the UK... Dean Buzzard. Oh, that's How a good great is that name? name? That's sounds like a, a great name. I was going to say it sounds like a type of bird. It, it sounds is. like a type of bird, but just buzz. But a Dean Buzzard sounds like a specific oh, type of bird, like a species of a buzzard. Yeah, look at that yeah. Dean Buzzard. Yeah, that's cool. Ah, the African Dean Buzzard. Very good. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Dean Buzzard. Thank you, Dean, and thank you, P. Basta. Well, from a couple of great names to another couple of great names, if I will, uh, I'd like to thank all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee, listener Jessica Fralin. Jessica is a fantastic name. It definitely is. And so is Fralin or Fralin, if yep. you would like to pronounce it that way, Jessica. Thank you so much for all your support over in Tennessee. Oh, uh, is that anywhere near Knoxville, Tennessee? Home of the Wigsphere on The Simpsons? <laughs> 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 the Sunsphere from the uh, the World Expo 1988, I believe, it was uh, the... Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'd also like to thank, uh, back, to, back, ho- back home if I could, from uh, Belmont in Western Australia, Annette McTaggart. Thank you, Annette. It Annette. is your time to shine on the airwaves here. Oh, so good. Belmont, WA. We'd love to visit that. We'd love to tour more of Australia. Yeah, a few people have been asking about coming over to WA recently. I, I said to them that I'm, I'm going to be, I'm looking to go there back for Perth Fringe. You, sh- you guys should come too. Fringe World. Possibly, yes. Early next year, January, February time. And maybe we'll see you there, Annette McTaggart. I'm not sure if Belmont is anywhere. Is that... But WA is... It's honestly... Belmont... Yeah, WA tiny. Belmont. It's so small. I mean, it's only about the size of bloody bloody Europe. Yeah, it's just Europe. What's Europe? (laughs) Speck of dust. Nothing compared to Asia. Speck of Speck of dust. (laughs) So you were saying like oh, speck of dust. Bel- <laughs> Belmont's just on the, is a, like just on, just near the Perth Airport. It's a suburb of Perth. That's what it, I was trying to tell you. There's mate. a good guy's store Tom. in Belmont. And that we'll see you there. We'll see you there. Uh yeah, Annette, Annette's great. Hey, Annette, you keep doing you. Yeah. Don't reckon, Jess? I could not reckon harder. I'd love to if you guys if we got a, a moment. I'd love to. Think. Nah, we're done. <sighs> You're out of time. You're out of touch. I'm out of time. Time. I'd love to thank a name that I'm not going to be able to pronounce. But you're going to give it a bloody red hot go. Uh, let, let me have a crack. I'd really love to thank. Um, and I, I always, I'm such a big fan of our patrons. They obviously help this show kick on and keep being made and etc. Audrey Chmielewski. It could be... I'm going to... Uh, C H M I E L E W S K I. Audrey Kumlowski. Audrey, I think you are very used to your surname being mispronounced. Kmel- so I'm sorry to have added to that. Kumlowski. But, but thank you. Sick name. For supporting the show. And that is a great name. Beautiful first name, too, Audrey. Audrey, gorgeous. Big fan of that name. Gorgeous. Big fan of she. She uh, is a little bit more secretive, though. Does I have no idea where in the world she's from. Let's guess. Where do you reckon? Um, Cape I'm, Cape Town, West Philadelphia. I'm betting she's from Melbourne. She's got a real Melbourne vibe about her. Okay, you think she likes a chai latte and a 
and a vintage bookstore. <laughs> Is that what we're about? That's what we're all about. Oh. That's what I'm about. And I'm very Melbourne. <laughs> I hate myself so much. Don't worry. The people out there do too, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> And now let me know. Hey, you know who doesn't hate you? Yep. Mr. P. Buster. <laughs> Mr. P. Buster. I'd also love to thank uh, maybe maybe almost our most frequent Twitter correspondent, Kathy Gribble. Kathy. From Maryville. Kathy. Or, Mar- as they say over in Maryville, how do they print it? It's different. You're thinking of Maryland. Maryland. So Maryville might be how they say it. Or, but if it's like Maryland, it'd be Mar- Mar- Maryville. Mar- I don't think it's Maryville. No, it's, it's Maryville. 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 Thank you, Kathy. The other day, Kathy said I'm her spirit animal. But you know what, Kathy? I'm a person. Is Kathy the one that we disappointed by saying that we don't watch Game of Thrones? Yeah. Sorry, Kathy. No, she wasn't disappointed. She was the opposite of disappointed. Oh, she, she said, she... thank God. Didn't she? Yeah. Oh, it's Kathy, She was stoked that we didn't. And I'm uh, thank you for. I mean, I'm happy to be a spirit animal, but I'm I'm both a physical being and a human, so it's very difficult for me to do. But I will do it for you if that's what you need. That's what she needs, mate. Do then it that's for her. I'll bloody do it. That's all she's asking. I know, and I'm saying I'll do it for Kathy. Kathy with a K. Anyway, Maryville, which is in Tennessee as well. Hey, double Tennessee episode. That is real cool. Hey. I wonder you if hang out with Jessica Frallen. I wonder if it's anywhere near the wig shop. No, stop. Knoxville. Cool. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening, and um, thanks for my report being so good again. Don't I don't thank know if yourself I, nah, for that. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I nailed it. It felt. No, nah, it's fun. I felt so excited about the the idea of it, and I don't know if I fully gave it everything Maddie, it deserved. You did great. You did so well. Would you like to thank either of us for any particular you are a bit particular, type of behaviour right? that has occurred throughout the thank show? Thank you for thanks, Dave. For you have been very sensible today. Hey, thanks. I, I often get thanked for my sensible behaviour. And thanks, Jess, for being a fucking loose unit. <laughs> you mad dog. Woo! Now let's all close our eyes really hard. <laughs> As we say, thank you so much for listening to the show. If you want to uh, support the show, you can always do so at patreon.com slash dogoonpod. You can always get in contact with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at dogoonpod and dogoonpod at gmail.com if you're an email kind of guy or gal. But all the links are in the description of this episode. We have our Melbourne show coming up for their 100th episode of September 16th. At the time of recording, there is less than 10 tickets left. We released a few more and they've gone too. Well, most of them, except for less than 10. <laughs> And also, so uh, please come. We really would love to sell it out and pack it and be like, yeah, and be like rock stars and be like, it's gonna be a party. Sort of crowd surfed. No, not even a crowd surf. We want to be on like on a throne and like sort of carried around. I'm really Jesus. keen to make it feel like a party. Let's have a good time. Yeah. Any suggestions? Welcome. We haven't fully thought out what we're gonna do, we but we want to make we want to make it fun. Well, we're focusing on Sydney at this point. Yeah. Um, and you should come to my show, Pretty Joy, on the 26th at the Giant Dwarf. That's this Saturday night, baby. Code. Uh, we'll have a link to that in the social medias. Um, and the, and the description code of the episode. is just do go on one word, six letters. This is simple. And we'll be there. Yeah. You get to see what we look like when we watch comedy. That's well, right. Matt, trying to. Do I'll get. I'll get one of these guys to introduce me on a stage. <gasps> that would be cool. I'd get pick Dave. Definitely pick Dave. He'd do a much better job. I do love doing that. Get you both up there. Um, and don't forget, if you come to Sydney, the Sydney live show at the Chippo Hotel, it's this Sunday afternoon. So do not forget. But until next week, we will say thank you so much for listening. And uh, by next week's episode, Jess and I will be uh, one year older. Ooh, well, technically, that's not true. But anyway, we'll <laughs> both be 27 years old. Until then, we will say thank you and goodbye. Later. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's it's up to you. Come on down to Raymond's Sugar Store for all your uh, sweet needs. We've got... We've uh, now got a range of artificial sugars, which is kind of against our ethos, but it's what the people wanted. So I've got Equal. (laughs) I've got Splendor. I've got Etcetera. Okay, come on there, Raymond. Thanks, Raymond. You nailed it in one take. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs>